Car dogs, car dogs. That's a curbing, sir. Curbing. We got a curbing going on here. Yeah, you, you curbed your car. You didn't take it back to the car corral where it belongs. Whoa. Dude, leave me a f alone. They just f me over in there. What, what'd they do? Are you okay? That's the second curbing, by the way. No, I'm not okay, you f But I'm a nice guy. Here we go. We're on the air. Episode 7. So much to talk about. It's like there's just a never-ending stream of nonsense happening. I mean, there's a good chance I'd be able to do this show forever the way things are going. Definitely not a shortage in the stupidity department, that's for sure. Yeah, just get a couple of cherries in there. Okay. Go for it. It's turning, it's churning it, it's churning it into chocolate milk, and then it's as it comes down. up, wow. it's churning it, it's churning it, it's turning into chocolate milk, and then you just get in there and you can sip it right up. Anyway, we got Agent Sebastian from the Cartnarks joining us later. This guy goes around patrolling grocery store parking lots looking for people who don't put their cart back. <laughs> sir, sir, you left your car right here. That's how the car goes. Pick it back to the car corral area. And like, you're even blocking your own door from opening. You think you'd understand how that could block someone else's door from opening, right? Why are you, Take it back. Why are you running after me? Because you're a fucking asshole. I'm a nice guy, sir. No, you're a fucking asshole. Luckily, I have good blocking skills. I blocked your attack. I'm... No. What are you doing? Are you making a video? Sir, this is smart for my protection. Are you making a video? Sir, it's for our protection. Are you making a video? Sir, this is in case someone tries to hit us or something, which is uh, might be happening. Are you making a video? Sir, this is a body cam for our protection. Uh-oh. This will test out the running skills. Okay. So far, so good. I told you, you're a pretty fast runner, sir. I personally love this. Go look at your car right now. How many scrapes and dings are on there? It's from all these assholes who leave the carts out in the parking lot that roll into your car while you're shopping. That's where they're coming from. This guy catches them in the act and shames them. And I commend him. He'll be coming on in a little bit. What are you doing? You're blocking traffic no, now. you're starting shit. Uh, so what's going on in clown world this week? Get a load of this one. Apparently they discovered a new species of land mammal. Not sure where this video is from, but if you're listening on Spotify, I'm looking at a video of someone filming some sort of creature squatting down in the corner of a room. It has some sort of white bacteria growing from its head. Looks like it's got tattoos all over its body and face. It seems to be attempting to mimic human behavior. See how it just starts smiling for no reason, and then all of a sudden it just switches to this concerned look? It's like it switches between being happy and scared. It's almost as if there's no feeling attached to his mannerisms. It's weird. It's like it emulates human emotions, sort of like how a parakeet mimics voices. Hmm. Now it looks like it's in a car. Wait, is that, is that it again? How you doing? What's up, man? Hey, y'all, y'all fuck with me tight shit. You feel me? See how it tries to talk? Hey, y'all, y'all fuck with me tight shit. You feel me? It's like it hasn't fully figured out how to speak properly. I'm in Miami, and my right now with my twin red for X. <laughs> Wait, is there another one in there? Oh, there's two of them. Man, what else leaked out of that lab in Wuhan? Not much information has come out about this one. I'm assuming this is footage from some sort of research organization. I'll have to keep an eye out for any developments. I'll keep you guys posted. What about this poor woman? The article reads, My husband won't take his mask off, even for sex. We're both vaccinated now. When will this stop? Oh, I don't know. Maybe when you delete the CNN app from his phone and throw away his soy milk. Try that. Maybe you can save your marriage. Ugh. See, there really are people like this. I remember covering this a few shows ago where it was like all these doctors recommended instead of having sex, you masturbate together six feet away from each other instead of having sex. But if you do have sex, 
wear a mask. And I'm like, who does this stuff? Well, here it is. This man is willing to destroy his marriage to avoid the minuscule chance of catching this virus. To the point where the cry for help from the wife has made national news. I mean, this guy's a piece of work. Uh, I hope she leaves him. I want that to be the reason why he lost his wife. I just want him to have to explain to everyone who asks him why they got a divorce so that everyone in his life realizes what a fucking goober this guy is. I want to interview this guy and see what he's thinking. The testosterone levels are plummeting at high speeds throughout the nation. You got guys walking around with tails and shit. I mean, could you imagine if there was a military draft? You put one of these guys walking around the city with a foxtail hanging out the back of his pants on the front lines? He's done. The country would be taken over that day. It's unreal. Now you got people tattooing Pfizer on their bodies. Have you seen this trend now? I mean, it just gets weirder and weirder. They're making songs now. Hiya, Pfizer. Hi, Ben. You got any extra shots? Sure, Ben. Sleeves up. I'm a Pfizer girl in a COVID world. I'm the classic mRNA tastic 95%. This is becoming like a religion. They're charging people at concerts a thousand dollars for a ticket to a show if you haven't been vaccinated, or twenty dollars if you have. Listen to this. Well, you could call it a no vax tax. That's what one Florida concert promoter is slapping on attendees who can't prove they've been vaccinated against COVID-19. The breakdown is this $18 a ticket if you've had your shot, 1000 bucks if you haven't. The band Teenage Bottle Rocket will be performing at the venue next month that's operating under this restriction. I had to reach out to these guys, Teenage Bottle Rocket. They write... We are a punk rock band in their bio. Yeah, because there's nothing more punk rock than overcharging your fans because they didn't get a vaccine. I mean, if I show up to this show, am I going to see a bouncy tent installed for the mosh pit? Are they going to be giving everyone helmets and knee pads too? Since they're so concerned with our safety and well-being. Punk rock. Give me a break. This is corporate clown rock. I asked them about this, too. They never responded, of course. Yeah. Speaking of bands, this band Broken Trojan, they made a song with one of my rants as their lyrics. It's called Fear Porn. They took it from the last podcast. I think I was going off about government control or something. Oh, he's anti-mask. He's anti-vaccine. Nope. I'm anti you or anyone, especially the government, forcing me to manage my health the way they feel is best. I don't believe in anyone having control over how I manage my health. That's my decision. No, I don't think COVID's a hoax, but I do believe it's being used and twisted for political and monetary gain. That I believe. Here's what they did with it. Let me clear something up before people start saying he's anti-mask, anti-vaccine. No, I'm anti-yo, anti-anyone, especially the government, forcing me to manage my health, my life, the way they see fit. I don't believe in anyone having control on how I handle my health. That's my decision. No, I don't think COVID is a hoax, but I do believe it's being used and twisted for political and monetary gain. That I believe. Yeah, you can find the song on Bandcamp, um, and they're on Spotify, but I'm not sure if the song's up on there yet, but yeah, check them out. Oh, here's something I wanted to bring up. So they tried to cancel another comedian, 
And by they, I mean another comic this time. Yeah, this is comic on comic crime. Tony Hinchcliffe, who's pretty much a roast comic, he does a show in Austin, Texas with a Chinese-American comic, Peng Deng, who goes up before him. The guy's entire set is basically just shitting on white people. I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. I uh, came to this country 10 years ago, went to college uh, in Alabama. <laughs> yeah, that's the correct response. <laughs> We invented gunpowder. Right? No Asians, no gunpowder, no gunpowder, no American Revolution. Wow. And all the white people in this country will still be talking quite like the British. <laughs> uh, and white people, you guys are the opposite because you guys invent shit, but you take credit. I hate it when the white immigrants act like they run the country. Uh, there's even a song about it. You guys know Led Zeppelin, right? Uh, Led Zeppelin is a band from England and they wrote a song called Immigrant Song. Uh, and that song is about how white immigrants coming into this country just, ah. White people, your protest is more demanding. Uh, your chants are tough. Like, stop the count, storm the capital, hand my pants, Jews will not replace us. I mean, it's pretty standard stuff, but the, the whole thing is racial, you know? And at the end, he asks everyone to be nice to Asian Americans. The like Asian protest, we didn't even say yellow lives matter. We just want you to stop messing with us. <laughs> just stop being mean to us. Okay, so he kind of wrapped it up in that at the end. So then, of course, Tony, being the insult comic that he is, comes on and just fucking rails on him. You've seen him on Kill Tony's show. Give it up for the one and only Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> You guys just eating it up, you fucking pussies. Now, obviously, it's the C word everyone's up in arms with. You know, he loses his agent. They write all types of articles about him. But what I find interesting is how this Peng Deng character, who is a comedian, goes on Twitter. He posts the clip of Tony doing this. Now, if you know anything about comedy, you know the joke was to be mean as possible to the guy asking you to be nice. That's the joke. That's the context of it. It seemed like he went that far because Peng was doing racial humor. So I feel like he felt he wouldn't be offended by this and actually just get a kick out of how over the top it was. I mean, the guy's career is based off insulting people. You know, he wrote a few of the Comedy Central roasts. I mean, those were fucking brutal. I mean, from what I've read, this guy's been on Tony's shows a few times. He's done some shows with him. Um, so he's familiar with his type of humor. I mean, people are treating this like, like Tony Hinchcliffe was standing in line at Subway and there was an Asian guy in front of him. And then the moment that his order was done and he left the building, he turns around at everyone in Subway and goes, oh God, aren't you glad this fucking chink is out of here? I mean, that is different. That is different. Now there, there's going to be people who say, nope, it doesn't matter. He said the C word. It doesn't matter where or when. Like, see, I don't look at this as a Michael Richards situation. You know why? Because Michael Richards was pointing out people in the audience that were being loud. And he got genuinely upset about it. And um, he went completely off the rails. I think it's completely different than playing off of what another comic is doing. If I'm on stage as a comedian and the next guy comes up as Tony Hinchcliffe and I overhear him go, well, great. Aren't you guys glad that fucking guinea's out of here? I would laugh. I, it, to me, it's two different things because I know what that environment entails. The joke is to be to be as mean as possible to the guy who said not to be mean. That's it. I mean, that's what it is. Because what really is the job of a comedian? I mean, they kind of take a step outside of society and they kind of look at everything like they're looking at a, you know, like a snow globe. 
you know, and it's, uh, they say the taboo things and they shake things up. I mean, that's what you, why you go to a comedy club, right? Is to, to hear people say things that you might not be able to say at your job. I'm just surprised a comic would be the one to tell on another comic for being mean. Like, take to social media and feed them to the cancel mob. It's like there's these sensitive woke people who have gotten into comedy now and are mixing with the traditional comics, and they can't handle it. I mean, that's got to be awful knowing that now even comics are getting offended by other comics. So that means now every time you're doing a show at Peng Dang on the roster, you have to worry about him going on Twitter the next day and posting a video of your set because he didn't like what you said. I mean, Jesus, dude. I don't know. Anyway, here's a guy who's not afraid to offend people. Matter of fact, he tells them like it is to their face. Oh, you could put it on the curb, or you could take it over to the cart corral. It's right over there. That's laziness, ma'am. Hey, don't, please don't videotape me. Well, man, you're the one who committed the violation. Let's talk about this first. I'm with the cart narcs. We shame lazy people who don't take the carts back. Uh, I gotta ask you a couple quick questions. Is this your first time shopping? Are you not familiar with grocery stores and how they work? Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. Good. Glad you learned your lesson. Appreciate it. Be kind. Return your carts. Weep, deep, wheelie, weep, skip, deep, deep, weep, weep, weep. Cart and sir, that's uh, splitting spots right there. That's not where the cart goes. Uh, hello, Agent Cordell with the cart and That's not where the carts go. We got a bumper magnet for you. There you go. Oh, got him. Yes, sir, that's not where the car goes, sir. Damn. What are you sticking on my car? It's a bumper magnet, sir. It's got our uh, Do that again. number. Why is that, sir? Do you need you can have that one? Don't you ever touch my car? What's wrong with your car, that's sir? Ridiculous. Well, sir, you left your car down where it could touch other people's cars, sir. Pardon me, let me it's got our phone number on it. You want to fuck with me? No, sir. I want you to call. Then get the hell away. I want you to take your cart back. So what I want Don't you to do? Fuck yourself. Why, why do you want me to f myself, sir? Sir, I'm a cart narc, Agent Cordell. And I'm a killer. Well, sir, that's not nice. I'm fixing to put about six right in your forehead. Oh, it's already rolling away. Weep, weep. Man, that car's loose. It could roll away and hit somebody. Perhaps these young children. We'd hate for them to grow up with a disability. Get the fuck away from me, asshole! Just go! So my next guest is part of a special ops group called Cart Narcs which is an independent group of agents who patrol grocery store parking lots looking for people who don't put their carts back in the corral. Today we have the head patrol officer, Agent Sebastian, with us. What's up, buddy? Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. First of all, I have to say I'm a big fan of what you do. Sean Avery introduced me to your videos. I've been addicted ever since. I mean, you get yelled at, chased, spit on. I'm surprised no one's pulled a gun on you yet. Has anything like Uh, that happened to you? Yeah, well, we have. uh, don't speak too quickly on that one because, yes, uh, this year, actually, in, uh, of all places, Texas. No shit. Yeah, I was a few, like, 45 minutes north of Austin. It's a little town up there, and... uh, a guy in his work vehicle, uh, was some, it was a type of plumbing truck, he had parked on the very end uh, part of the parking lot, put his cart just spot next to his, and then uh, I come over there, flag him down, hey, how's it going? Uh, he didn't put your cart out, and he kind of jokes with me a little bit. You know, you've probably seen in some of the videos, we're like, well, why don't you do it for me? Or, yeah, go ahead yeah. and take care of that. And uh, so we're talking for like 30 seconds, and I'm kind of explaining my case, making my, uh, making my case like I always do. And as soon as I pull out my little bumper magnet that says, you know, I don't return my shopping cart like a jerk, um, he says, don't, you know, classic stuff we've seen a bunch of times, don't effing put that on my truck. And after I say, well, why don't you put your cart back? <laughs> he reaches down <laughs> and out comes like a, I don't know, it looked like a Glock 9 or something like that. Oh, uh, slide, you know, racks it back. Uh, meanwhile, the entire time, he's got like a little brown chihuahua sitting there who's just like looking at me like, oh, hey, who are you, buddy? Right. Uh, and so, yeah, then he drove off um, after that. And uh, yeah, that was the first. Act. I've been threatened with firearms, but that was the first yeah. one that was first actually presented to me. Now, are you prepared for these type of situations? Uh, you know, it depends on what you mean by prepared. Uh, so shortly after that, we were, I was talking about it, uh, and uh, a cop actually sent me this vest I'm wearing right now. Yeah. Like, so you, before this, I had just kind of like a, like a tactical vest, you, you know, pockets and stuff you might have for whatever, fishing or yeah. paintball or whatever. Uh, and he's a cop in Baton Rouge said, Hey man, I got an extra uh, vest. I can send it to you. I said, sure. Why not? 
you know? Yeah. Uh, but no, I don't carry uh, anything or anything like that when gotcha. I'm out. It's just me and my wits. Gotcha. But I, I've seen you and you, you run pretty fast. So that's a good, you know, <laughs> that's a good little safety net. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, the most fascinating part about what you do is what you're kind of talking about here is most of, most of these people get so fucking angry when you catch them in the act and they try to flip it around on you. Like you're the problem. Like for example, my favorite one is the one titled "I'm a fat asshole." <laughs> I mean, this guy chased you around the entire parking lot. It's like he just couldn't accept the fact he was caught. And I love how you try to explain it to these guys, like how you're looking out for other people. And like you're even blocking your own door from opening. You think you'd understand how that could block someone else's door from opening, right? Why are you Take it back. why are you running after me? Because you're a fucking asshole. I'm a nice guy, sir. No, you're a fucking asshole. Luckily, I have good blocking skills. I blocked your attack. I'm... No. What are you doing? Are you making a video? Sir, this is smart for my protection. Are you making a video? Sir, it's for our protection. Are you making a video? Sir, this is in case someone tries to hit us or something, which is uh, might be happening. Are you making a video? Sir, this is a body cam for our protection. Uh-oh. This will test out the running skills. Okay. So far, so good. I told you, you're a pretty fast runner, sir. He'd tell oh, yeah, you to go that... away, and then he'd keep following you. But he's the <laughs> guy that told you to go away. And then you go it's... away, and then he pulls up, and it's like he's got to find a way to justify what he did to make himself feel better by putting you down. Right. You know, so, that. like, I'm like, I trying to do everything I can not to... Okay. Uh-oh, watch out. Is this him? I don't know. Can I ask you a question? I think, I think you should just go on home and forget the whole thing. And it's almost as if he started to understand what you were saying, but his ego was so hurt that he kept trying to make you out to be a loser for doing what you were doing. There's a lot of things you could do with your I time. Understand. Sir, we can, there's a lot more we can cure the common cold and we can cure cancer. Just this is, Do something useful with we can your pick, life. This is like picking up litter, basically. Do something useful. This is not like picking up Very litter. similar, sir. You littered the... Both go our both ways, you know. This is like uh, so, so sad. Yeah, exactly. He leaves the parking lot, drives back to the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> He enlists, he goes and finds a manager who is of no help to him. Right. Uh, who's just kind of like, okay, whatever. Everybody everybody go away. They're just, they're just trying to de-escalate, which I, I totally understand on their part. Yeah. Then there's a random guy who's just walking in the sidewalk. He's like, this guy, can you? <laughs> because I'm sure people are listening to this. They're really interested, aren't you? Yeah. What he did is he left his, costume. let me explain real quick. He left his card out in the middle of like a spot. I my car. I got in my car. I was going to turn the camera away from me. It's unbelievable. They're like alcoholics who get angry when you say they have a drinking problem. It's like yeah, they're just not ready to have the conversation yet. You know right. what I mean? It's like you're approaching them with the bottle in their hand already. It's like you got to catch them like anger. the next day, you know, on a, on a Sunday uh, during their hangover. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Have you ever yeah. ran into uh, any recurring character? Have you ever like... Anyone that you've stopped to have, have they like followed you, hunted you down, or you just happened to cross paths with them again? Right, that with is that is sort of the, the the dream is to be back in a place where I recognize somebody from a previous encounter. Not yet, okay. Uh, and I, I definitely do revisit parking lots, or I'm in different cities and on later dates. Yeah, and uh, it just it hasn't happened yet. But because I'm, I'm know, curious to averages. see if they've like rehabilitated themselves, you know, because I feel like they go through a little bit of PTSD when you show up. You know, they got to be thinking about what the you know what they did wrong. I mean, dude, I would say ninety percent of the. 90% of the scratches and dings on my car right now are from people who leave their <laughs> carts out that roll into my car and people who hit my car with their car door when they open it. That's why I just park oh, yeah. a mile away from the store now. I park so far away, I might as well just call an Uber to bring me to the entrance. I just can't <laughs> deal with the public, man. It's I just don't understand it, man. And you would think that the uh, the establishment would be a little more on your side. I noticed I watched one video where they get they get upset with you. It's like they should be happy that you're out there enforcing their rules. Why do you think that is? Well, I think it's a couple things. Number one, they are typically, if, if you see, there are, like you said, a handful of our videos where a manager comes out or a security guard is there. Yeah. And they're only hearing, first off, they're hearing one side of the story, right. which that side typically is. This man is harassing me and screaming at me and blah, blah, blah. Because you hear it in our videos, too, with a lie about what we're doing. Right. And um, number one. And number two, because – and you see this not just from managers but from everybody – or not everybody, but a lot of people in our videos – is because they're screaming and their heads you know, going off, people think, oh, well, they must have been aggrieved somehow. This guy really must be bothering yeah. these people if they're acting like – even though – 
half these videos, I hadn't even touched anything about them. I've just asked you, there's videos where I just said, Hey, can you take that back? And I, they instantly go into rage mode. Yeah. Um, so I think it's those two things. And number three, they just want the situation to end. Cause it's, you know, right. And I get that certainly. So I think it's a combination of those things. You're right, man. I noticed that even with people too, that are kind of like onlookers and you know, they, all they see is somebody getting upset you know, and now they automatically get mad at you, you know, it's like, how about assessing the situation first before you start (laughs) painting people out to be the bad guy? Jesus. It was so, it was so funny. That happened very recently in, in, uh, in Fresno, California here where I stopped, I, I'd asked the guy, I didn't even, I didn't touch his car. All I did was ask him, Hey man, cause he put, he left his car blocking part of the handicap area. He had, he was so close to the store. He clearly, it was a Costco too. So, you know, he'd been walking around for quite a while in there. Right. He goes, oh, stop harassing me. I just came from church, which has nothing to do with anything. Right. And then so this lady, this lady comes up and says, as she starts yelling at me on his uh-huh. behalf. Uh-huh. Then, a, then a third guy is walking past and he starts screaming at me because the woman is yelling at me. And all I'm doing, <laughs> she asked me a question and he says, I'll fucking kick your ass. And I'm like, all I'm doing is answering her questions. She started the conversation with me. So it was, it was even a person removed. Yeah. And of course he never kicked, tried to kick my ass. He's just, it's, you know, it's easy for him to say, oh, he's bothering a woman or whatever. So isn't it yeah, fascinating right. that people just, they don't want anyone to enforce societal standards for some reason. They want this live and let live kind of thing going on, you know? And it, and it's funny because I've always been a big believer in protecting our free will as people. I've never been a fan of people telling others what to do, but I do believe in maintaining societal standards. It's a bit of a balance, like, you know, exercising your free will. You should be conscious of how your actions affect others. Like if you're, let's say like if you're someone that doesn't wear a mask, okay, which is your right, then be conscious when you're around people, not to fucking cough on them. Cover your mouth in some fashion. When you're in line, give people space. Don't space. Don't be breathing on their neck. I mean, we've done this our entire lives. You know, this is all common courtesy. You're an adult. Be considerate. (laughs) You can utilize your free will while being conscious of others. But if you're someone who chooses to just leave a cart in the middle of a parking lot, because you're too lazy to return it. You don't have control over that cart rolling away and hitting some old lady or someone's car after you leave. This is just zero consideration for others. No, ma'am, you uh, you left your cart here like a lazy bones. Yeah? There's a cart corral all over the place, like right over there, actually. Right. So why did you take it back? I just didn't. Well, no, there's a good reason. It's because you're lazy. Yeah, okay. I'll take that. Yeah, and it's always and they they always have that attitude until it happens to them. Right. And that's like what you just said there. That's that's the that addresses the number one uh excuse. I mean we've we've got 15, 30 excuses that people throw at us, but that's the number one is they'll say, uh, they pay people to collect the carts. Yeah, well, sure. I love but that. That person that person, cart collector, he's not here right now. So like you just said, we don't have, we have no control over what happens between the time you leave that cart yeah. and maybe half hour, hour, whenever they come to collect the carts. You know, anything could happen as far as, like you said, property damage and or uh, and physical damage in some cases uh, to people. Yeah, it's funny. Like you said, it's it, it's like they uh, it, it's almost like people have a hard time transitioning from adolescence to adulthood. It seems like, you, you know what I mean? It's like they're just like these toddlers in adult bodies. You know, what <laughs> I mean, like you said, it's like when when someone does that same thing that they do to people to them, they get mad. Who does that? A six year old. Right. And and then we're and we're among these people, and we're not allowed to say anything about it, which drives me absolutely insane. To the point where now I have to remove myself from the situation and park a mile away. I really do this. It's awful oh, because damn. you can't fight that. That's why I love guys like you. Like and and what's sad is like there's not many people like you doing that. Like, but from my understanding is that you have a bunch of agents across the country, correct? I mean, how many uh, you guys are out there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's sort of a, a bit of the theater of it is that yes we do put on different characters for the different regions we're in right. but in fact it's just me oh <laughs> okay uh, see i didn't know i wasn't quite sure so you see so yeah, because you, it's a body camera you can't yeah. really tell obviously it's just the yeah. voice or whatever that changes gotcha uh, so yeah you get that's a common thing that people you know that's it's easy to mistake or or to, and it's not and we're not trying to hide that necessarily it's just yeah. kind of part of the fun of because we want to do this with some value, like entertainment value to it as well. So yeah. again, like it's the silliest, easiest thing in the world. So the more we can, or I can be, I, should, I almost said we, <laughs> the more I can be yeah. silly about it, <laughs> it really exposes how insane 
like you said, when people get violent yeah. about me asking a polite and silly thing. It's insane. I think every industry needs a team of cart narcs overlooking the operation. Like the the restaurant business could use something like this. Like, what about the people who let their kids run around the table at the restaurant? No one ever does anything about this. When I when I see that, I dream of the manager walking up to them and telling them they need to control <laughs> their child or you have to leave. Why don't they ever do this? That that that's what everyone in t- in the entire restaurant wants. This isn't your fucking house. You got a waitress walking around with a full tray of plates in their hand and they have to dodge some kid because the restaurant doesn't have the balls to maintain a standard at their restaurant what are they scared of the only people who would complain are shitty parents or, le- or let's say the kids constantly scream and just go up to them and ask to bring the child outside and attempt to calm it down you don't have to be rude about it why is this so taboo to do what out of fear of pissing off inconsiderate people why do we care how these people feel that's why there needs to be more people like you man you have the balls to, well, to think, speak up. Yeah, and that's it. Goes back to what we were just talking about with the managers and stuff. Is there's a, this customer is always right mentality that obviously, like you, like you were just saying, is not accurate. And uh, that's so. Yeah, we do have, and obviously, the whole shutdown thing kind of hurt all our, our branch off options. Right. Uh, we, we just started doing park narks where we uh, we have little bumper magnets for people who park across three, four, five lanes yeah. or spots, I should say. And then one of the most requested ones we get is some sort of gym narcs for guys and girls who don't re-rack their weights. Um, <laughs> I don't know how that we would pull that off. I'd have to like find a gym owner who was cool with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> cause I start, like I said, if I started doing that, the, the manager would kick me out in two seconds that, and revoke my membership. See, that's the problem is getting inside the operation. Cause I, cause I was thinking about the other day, I was, I was grocery shopping and, you know, and you got Flo there sitting in the middle of the aisle with, her, with a cart full of groceries and she's just oblivious to everything around her and she's reaching up on the, you know, uh, on the shelves and everyone's trying to figure out how to get around her because they're scared to say, uh, excuse me, cause you moved the cart. It's like, we, we're like so conditioned to just cater our lives to around inconsiderate people like I, I don't know about you but it's like when I go out in the public and I feel like a minority in this sometimes is that I'm always looking out for other people I'm not perfect man I'm telling you this but it's like I know when I leave my house I'm no longer in my house so I'm not going to operate like I'm in my house so I know I gotta I gotta I gotta party with other people so if I'm in the grocery store it's like am I getting in the way of somebody am I gonna knock into somebody and I'm telling you man sometimes I look around and look at these people people's face they have tunnel vision it's just like every step they take is me 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 and it, and it's just man it's just i don't know it's just becoming a burden to society and nobody talks about this kind of stuff you know no, i agree and that's that's one of the things and i think what you're talking about there is it's like you said there's a polite way to do it hey pardon yeah, me excuse me exactly. but the problem is that people have this i i'm never wrong attitude and so yep. we don't want you people don't want to deal with them flying off the handle and screaming at you so they say I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm not even going to make, I'm not even going to make the polite ask. Uh, That's where we come in. We make at least one. (laughs) Yeah. We we always ask politely. Yeah, you're right. It's the ego thing, man. It's like they can't ever be wrong. And that's why I love the people that you do confront and you always do it in a polite way. I watch, I watch how you do it. Um, and, and, and in a comedic way, but you know, the people that just go, Oh yeah, you're right. And then they just put the card away. Yeah. Maybe I should have, you know, it's like, see, that's somebody that doesn't have a big ego, but th- those people seem to be a minority, but the other people, when they want to fight and fight about, it's just crazy, man. See, look at the wind carrying that card right now. Man at the parking lot at the it's not a harassment. Harassing. I'm having a polite conversation. I'm the cart narcs. Yeah, I'm Jefferson. Jefferson? Yes. Mention that you left your cart out. Yes. Are you a customer or an employee? I'm a customer. And I'm the cart narcs. Yes, it is. Thank you. Do you know this man? I don't know. I'm the cart narcs. I identified She's myself. Me. I'm the cart narcs. She left her cart out in the middle. Permission. In the middle of the parking me. spot. This is not harassment. This is a polite. <laughs> sir, I don't want. I don't want to bother you, sir. He's on foot and he's filming me. Is he white, black, Hispanic, or Asian? You know, amazingly, he's a white asshole. That's what he is. Uh, don't forget muscular. Yeah, and I, I kind of use those videos. Number one is like <laughs> a little bit of glimmer of hope. Number yeah, first off, <laughs> but I get. You know, you see if any comment of our videos will have at least one or two people who will say, 
oh my God, you're causing that person to flip out. You're going to give them a heart attack. You are harassing. Like, no, they have every opportunity just to say, yeah. oh, my bad. You're right. Yeah. And take it back. But, and so that's, but again, we're as human beings, I think these, these commenters, they identify with these people. Yeah. I had a guy, we haven't, we haven't published this video yet. It'll be next week from uh, Milwaukee of all places Yeah, where the dude He's screaming at me. Why are you pissing me off, man? You mother effer. He threatened. He tried to hit me with his car a little bit. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, not the first time that's happened. And he's, I mean, you're going to get killed. You're going to get your ass beat. And why are you making me do this? And I said, well, you at no time did I make you do anything. You could take your car back right now. Yeah. And then he hits his, as he's pulling, he, kept, he put his cart right next to his car. So as he's doing the little turnout, yeah. side swipes his own cart. So it's just the most, and, but uh, even after that, he's just still screaming and, yeah. you know, effing me and whatever. They'll destroy their own property just so they can never say they're wrong. Oh, that happened. Well, I used to do this move. We called it the pit maneuver and we've, uh, I'll explain yeah. why we discontinued it in a minute here, but it was to kind of do what we talked about to kind of show people yeah. by taking their cart that they've left out and put it right behind their car. And then I'm not holding it there. I just walk yeah. away. Say, see what can happen. See how inconsiderate this is. Yeah. Uh, and there have been there were numerous people who would back into their into the cart to move it out of the way, as opposed to just getting out and putting it back where it belongs. Well, I'm gonna go put your cart behind your car, so you have to put it back, okay? Just because it's, it's yours. It's your responsibility. Where are you going? You know what? Get the car now! So we stopped doing that because our lawyer our lawyer was like, well, you know. Uh, it's sort of a gray area, you know, you mm. could get sued, blah, 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 you know, it's, it's find some other tactics, which we'd have, and we continue to, to try to look for new tactics. So, yeah. um, but yeah, like I said, they will hurt, they will damage their own vehicles rather than be shown to be wrong. It's insane. It's, it's really insane. Man. And I, I got to ask you, and I'm sure that your sentiments are, we have similar sentiments about this, but what, what made you get it? And we've, I think we've already touched on this, but I'm just curious from your own words, what made you get into what you're doing and, and recording well, uh, it and actually documenting this and putting it out to the public? Yeah. Well, my mom was killed by a loose card. So that was that, <laughs> nah. but uh, you know, that's for the, the movie version. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was really something super simple and innocuous. I was actually I'm in the office here at work and I was talking to the guy who sits with us and we were just talking about things like this. Yeah. And he's very much like an anti-litter guy, very like a clean freak. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, we were just going through the list of stuff that's like that and shopping carts was one of them. And, uh, it's but we kind of figure oh well shopping carts that's a that's a one there's one place where that happens like litter can happen anywhere right. you know like the gym thing can happen at the gym but you need the gym approval obviously you can just walk up to any shopping mall out there or grocery store so we started doing it got two and a half years or so now and we didn't realize just kind of to see had no idea that all this you know like the violence and the guns and the fights and whatever yeah uh would happen all that ego stuff but yeah it really has kind of morphed into uh what we're talking about like a real examination of human psychology that's what uh, it is just and you know just step by step doing you know new stuff as, as often as i as i can yeah you know it, it's funny man I, I just wish that the grocery stores would start enforcing their rules there it's because they don't realize it's like the the consequences of these people it's like they're they want to maximize their profits right so they don't want to piss off people and stuff like that but it's like they have all this chaos going on in the parking lot and all these the potential problems i mean hitting a car you could hit an old lady or a little girl or something like that and it's like a sign that says return the carts is just not enough obviously so there is no. a little bit of attempt that they make but it's almost it's kind of arrogance in a way it's like once you, all right we have your money and now that you're outside it's just a free-for-all you know what i mean yeah. it's like it, it, i don't right. know i like there has to be some kind of stand. i think they get away with that you know because that's still part of the experience right that's their parking lot we're all grouped together like this and they kind of just ah, whatever happens happens you know <laughs> It's funny on some of those signs where it says, please return cart here. It'll say, uh, you know, certain stores will say we are not responsible for damage caused by uh, unattended carts or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how legal that is. Cause I suppose, I suppose they're, they're accurate in that because the person mm -hmm. who left the cart out is responsible for that. And I don't know if you've seen in some cases, I see these mostly in like Walmarts is they have these little like trailers that has a giant pole with three or four cameras on it. Um, it's got a little blue light on top mm. and it's there, I, I suppose to, deter shoplifters and people who would you know loiter and do whatever drug deals in the park i don't know whatever yeah yeah uh 
but you would think that could be used for parking or for carts as well. But uh, yeah, they, like you said, they're not willing to take that step. Yeah, man. I, I, I you know, it's like, I, I wish this would grow into the thousands. Like I, I, I want more cart narcs out there. I, I'm demanding this right now from you. You need to hire people and it needs to go into other industries, man, because think about it. Like you're, you're a one man show and look at the attention that you're getting and you're in the support that you're getting. There's a need for people like you. You know what I mean? And I bet you that there would be people willing to actually make that their (laughs) occupation. If you could get some kind of crowdfunding and get get people on board so you could actually pay people to do this. I mean, dude, I want to see a cart narc at every grocery store I go to (laughs) until the grocery stores start getting these workers in shape. There needs to be a boot camp for parking lot workers, man. I'm telling you. It's funny you say that because I'll pretty much daily we get a DM from somebody saying, hey, I'm in, you know, whatever city in America or Canada, <laughs> and uh, I'd love to, uh, I can I can do it right now. Yes, yeah, see? <laughs> it's, it's a liability thing, obviously, so we right. can't accept any videos or whatever. Right. Because um, if they did get hurt or if they just, or if someone else got hurt, you know, in the crossfire, it would be an issue. But yeah, no, it's right. certainly, uh, that's certainly on the table as far as either having guests, special guest agents or other folks around. Yeah. Well, I think that if you keep doing what you're doing and if maybe, you know, you have some other people, maybe they're willing to kind of make videos in an undercover way like you're doing it. And maybe it will just shake things up, spark the conversation like we're having. And maybe there'll be some business owners out there that kind of will make them think a little more and actually enforce some of their rules. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's funny. Actually, you mentioned there's only uh, this pops up on my radar because I any yeah. shopping cart news people send to me. But I think it's New Jersey where they some representative there proposed a fine for people who leave their carts out ah. uh, in the handicapped area. Okay, uh, not not anywhere else, but because the handicapped areas say no parking. Yeah, it doesn't say there's no it doesn't say parentheses except for carts. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, because it is. And I bring this up when I when I catch people doing it. I said, well, you know, these areas are striped off for a reason. As someone has a chair, my uh, told the story of my best friend growing up, his mom was in a wheelchair our, my, our entire lives and they had the little the lift from the van. And if yeah. you can't get that thing out, if there's a cart sitting right there. Yeah. That's funny, man. There's been times when I was younger, I've left the cart out, but you know, as, as I got older, I just started looking at it as you're picking up after yourself. Like you said, it's just part of being considerate. Like I, I thought the older you get, the more self-aware you're supposed to become. You know, it's like, it's almost as if, you know, like I said, like the adolescence, the transition adult, it's just not happening. But now that I know you're patrolling, I, I'll never put my, not put my cart away. I, I, dude, I think about you every time I finish putting my groceries in the trunk. I'm like, I know he's out there lurking in the shadows, man. It could be. Just could bring be. the cart back, Joey. But look, man, Agent Sebastian, look, I, I think you deserve a medal. I will always support the cart narcs. I salute you, my friend. And thanks for doing the show, man. And where could people find you? And what else do you want to promote? No, thank you. And yeah, you can uh, check us at Cartnarks on any social media platform from TikTok to YouTube, uh, Instagram or whatever. Um, and then we're on the radio on it's, uh, the Woody show. is in about 25, 30 cities or so, uh, depending on where you are. But again, if you need to, if you want to find anything in particular, I'd say the YouTube channel is probably the best place because you don't have to yep. deal with the algorithm with the Facebook. I, like it's all right there. It's You can pick and choose what you want. Gotcha. Uh, if you're looking for a specific video. Right on, man. All right, we're out of here. Cart narks out. Goodbye. Hey, sorry.